All right. Do we have a stream, ladies and gentlemen? All right, we'll give it just a moment here. Do we have transmission? Can I see confirmation? All right. There it is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Joe Embriano, the Fullerton Informer. Coming to you live from the sunny streets of Southern California on this Tuesday Drive Time Edition. Today is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. This is your host, Joe Imbriano, P.O. Box 4121, Fullerton, California, 92834. On the web at Fullertoninformer.com. And today I want to bring your attention to the Fullertoninformer.com website. Given the headlines today, I would like everyone, if they can, to Google something for me. Type in Operation Gotham, the Fullerton Informer. Once again, type in Operation Gotham, G-O-T-H-A-M, the Fullerton Informer. Any of you... Uh, have a chance to go on there. I would love to see your comments on what comes up when you get that article pulled up. Five years ago, I wrote that article talking about places that were going to be subjects of attacks in the United States. And I guess the issue today is the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge just outside of Baltimore. And apparently uh, a cargo ship just mysteriously lost all its power right in the harbor, right? Okay, so this massive cargo ship, it didn't lose power once, it lost power multiple times, and it didn't lose power as it was crossing the Atlantic or coming up the eastern seaboard in high seas, it lost power right smack dab in the harbor, right? You would be hard pressed to find any example of any of these cargo ships ever having a total loss of power ever anywhere. But yes, it sure happened today, didn't it? <laughs> right? Can uh, any of you uh, look into Operation Gotham Tell me uh, what you guys find. Have you guys, uh, did any of you happen to look at that and, and see what comes up by any chance? Let me see if I can get this thing up. Has anybody found Operation Gotham? The Fullerton Informer. I want you guys to look at that. So I wrote that like five years ago, folks, when uh, we were breaking down some of the information on the uh, coming attacks on certain cities. Now, terrorism comes in many forms, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't just come in uh, fake airplanes hitting buildings as they use uh, psychotronic uh, weaponry to make you believe fake airplanes hit buildings when in fact they, in fact, they were dustified by advanced uh, resonant frequency weapons. Terrorism comes in anything they desire to conjure up to make it look like something else, folks. And, and terrorism can come in the form of what is made to appear to be an accident as well. Okay? And I, I want you to understand that uh, what happened, what happened today in Maryland in that harbor if you believe that that ship lost power on accident, well, I've got a, an Okie Finoki Swamp Estate on the backside of the plasma moon to sell you for a hundred trillion dollars in Federal Reserve notes. Okay, so seriously, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot expect anyone in their right mind to believe that one of those ships just loses power. Do you know how many? 
fail-safe redundancy mechanisms are in place on one of those things? Do you have any idea? I, it's, it's, it's unconscionable how stupid they think we are. Got to make a quick adjustment here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so this thing doesn't move. Um, you know, I'm still having a hard time finding a holder that doesn't bounce around all over the place. I might have to just uh, give it up here. I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me see. No, that's not going to work. So this was a false flag, no doubt. Um, oh, we got the wrong camera angle here. Just a second. Nice neighborhood that we're in. We swap this background. Okay, we're back to me again. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other way to do this uh, without making it. Okay, I'm just going to put it here. I think that's a little safer, okay? And hopefully we'll have uh, no issues here. All right, you guys can see me, right? Okay, so it, the point is, I want you, I don't want you to see me, I want you to listen to me, all right? Because I'm not what's important here, but rather the message is what's important, all right? So we got this massive ship that took out a bridge that's got about 185 feet of clearance in uh, one of the main access areas to Baltimore. I mean, just beyond this bridge, uh, or the ter the big terminals, right? And, you know, if you were going to get ready to do some sort of an invasion uh, and you wanted to have uh, the ability to bring in a bunch of military equipment, uh, you know, naval equipment and large ships, you obviously have to get rid of these bridges that have, you know, 180 feet of clearance. They're not tall enough. So the best way to get rid of these bridges isn't to get a permit from the county commission to have it demolished or the State Department of Transportation to have it eliminated. You just, uh, maybe you just remote control, a, you know, the uh, cargo ship to shut down the same way they remote control those gigantic commercial aircraft to do nosedives with 350 people on them. They've got the ability to remote control all kinds of stuff, folks. And like I said, terrorism does not necessarily have to be on, on its face, at face value, something that seems to be intentional. A lot of things, like for example, the USS Liberty, uh, you know, that was an act of terrorism that they actually called an accident, right? So, you know, in this case, this is, I believe, an act of terrorism that they're calling an accident. Because terrorism is really a, a subjective term, but it's one that just des is, it, it, it describes something that is insanely evil, that no one would expect to be done on purpose, for the purpose of furthering evil agendas, um, you know, regardless of what kind of psychological effect it has, even though something like this does have a psychological effect, I mean, what's next? Are planes going to start, uh, you know, losing power and, and crashing into uh, government buildings? I mean, come on. So if you understand the Chesapeake Bay and the geography of that part of the country, there really is only one more bridge that needs to be dealt with that stands in the way of having full unfettered access from the Atlantic Ocean, uh, you know, to Baltimore there. And there's just one, one bridge left that's got about 200 feet of clearance on it. But this one was really close to the terminals. And it's an awfully suspicious event. Now, uh, I don't know whether this bridge was taken out intentionally uh, to pave the way for just one more bridge to be taken down intentionally so that they can move massive uh, military ships through the region. Or it's possible that this was done to disrupt transportation to one of those uh, peninsulas there 
where they're going to be working on something they don't want anybody to see. But I suspect it's probably both because they like to kill two birds with one stone. Um, those cargo ships, I'm, I mean, if you understand how those things work and how sophisticated they are, how in the world did it totally lose power, okay? All right, look, this is a, a four-cylinder BMW. It's 30 years old. The only way that this car can lose power is two ways, okay? And that is if I disconnect the battery and I shut off the engine. All right, now do you know how many uh, fail-safe systems there are on a cargo ship that crosses thousands of miles of open ocean that end up traversing seas that are the height of apartment buildings with winds whose speeds exceed the IQ levels of most Americans? It's unbelievable what a joke this is. But the problem is when they insult your intelligence to this extent and they can get away with it, the only thing stopping them from notching it up another level for their duping delight is their own level of restraint, which is virtually non-existent. And that's what's so dangerous. Because when you have supposed accidents like this happening, no infrastructure in the entire country is safe if the people that run the Port Authority and that are in charge of the maritime operations of these various shipping companies and the Coast Guard. And, you know, where's the tugs and all this stuff? I mean, come on. Did, I'm surprised the tugs didn't show up and pull it into the bridge because this was such a rigged job. Where was the escort when, you know, there, were no, there was no response. If this thing was losing power repeatedly, there should have been some response, but nothing, okay? I don't know what to tell you, except that if you look at the uh, Operation Gotham, the Fullerton Informer, you need to read that article. Go to the FullertonInformer.com, Google Operation Gotham, the Fullerton Informer. This is really sad that, you know, five years ago I was pointing out certain things that were going to happen and where they were going to happen based on these, uh, these sickos that run the media, you know, literally making a mockery out of us, humiliating us with the uh, bread and circus programming they have that literally makes a complete mockery out of men, all right? By the way, if you're into sports, well, that's, uh, that's a problem because you took the bait, all right? And, and the bait is designed to make you swallow the hook all the way into your stomach. All right. Sports is a big waste of time, bread and circus diversion that is it is financed and has been invented for a long time to absorb the, uh, the the masculinity's energy of fighting and emasculating the men in such a way that their anger and aggression towards evil is redirected towards a tribal instinct of a fictitious uh, entity called a sports team and its self-preservation and victory, not their families, and not their communities, and not their country's survival and victory. It almost is like a really well, I guess you could say that this vicarious existence that these these men live by, uh, you know, wearing these T-shirts and these caps and, and getting all excited about a couple of uh, guys trying to beat each other up over a piece of pigskin on artificial turf in the snow as, you know, everybody out there is trying to dislocate their shoulders and get a concussion, snap some of their femurs, tear up some of their meniscus and uh, the connective tissue 
that has already been uh, weakened by the glyphosate-laced wheat and oats and other grain products that have been, well, advertised to us by these very athletes themselves, right? The point is, Operation Gotham, the Fullerton and former.com, Google it. And you tell me what you think. I'd love to see uh, your feedback in the comments after this video is done. Tell me what you think of what I published. And tell me what you think about what happened over there and what we're being told happened. And I mean, just look at the uh, Chesapeake Bay and, you know, that area. And just look at how much infrastructure has to be wiped out to have a Russian, uh, the Russian fleet invade the eastern coast of the United States, coming right up to uh, Annapolis there, right? I mean, all they got to do after this bridge is torn down is take one more down or they can just get rid of it on their way in. Don't you realize we let the Japanese invade and bomb Pearl Harbor on purpose to get us into the war? You don't think our government was involved in Pearl Harbor? And don't kid yourself, folks. I've got dead uncles at the bottom of that harbor submerged in an in, entombment in, in of steel that was the false flag that got the United States into the war. And don't kid yourself, they're, they're going to run more false flags in the United States to get us into another war. But they do have to get a lot of the infrastructure positioned and repurposed to suit the military invasion and occupation's needs. And like I was going into the other day, you know, you have the implosion of these metropolitan regions, these areas economically, you know, the, the Hegelian dialectic, the problem, reaction, solution, you, uh, you, you basically, you know, you run a company like Purdue Pharma where you falsify the harms and addictive properties of a drug like these opioid uh, pain relievers that the Sackler family made untold fortunes off of by ruining everyone's life. And, and people get highly addicted to these painkillers to where it literally just turns the entire population into zombies. And so, you know, they can't work, they can't think, they can't perform, they can't function, but they can slam, they can cook, they can tweak, they can smoke, they can bake, and they can do it under a blue tarp in any weather conditions as long as they've got their goodie bag, right? And so you've got these metropolitan areas that were once very productive and... Uh, enjoyable and full of purpose and vibrance and life and uh, and people that have been turned into uh, tent cities full of a bunch of hypodermic needles and ex-cons that have driven the commercial real estate business into the uh, P-trap of the sewer system of the building, right? And so what we have is massive vacancies and you have these these former uh, massive metropolitan areas adjacent to deep water ports being hollowed out and vacated. Why? Well, I mean, you've got to put the troops somewhere when they decide to show up. I mean, after all, we knew they were coming, so we baked them a cake. After all, Roosevelt knew the, the Japanese uh, uh, fleet was coming, so he had all the uh, guns locked down on the boats, made sure everybody couldn't shoot things out of the air, and told everybody to go to sleep and go to church when uh, the bombs started dropping on Pearl Harbor, right? We knew they were coming, so we baked them a cake. We knew they were coming, so what are we going to do? Maybe we need to get some of these bridges out of their way so they can pull up in their uh, limousines. Uh, that are literally three or four hundred feet tall with, when you consider the amount of equipment that'll be on these things. I don't know what they're up to, folks. I don't know. But I do know this. What's going on ain't what you've been told. And everything on the news, by and large, is for the most part a lie. You know, we've got these people uh, telling us that a massive cargo ship totally lost power. Right around the same time that uh, I think this uh, this this uh, Larry Fink guy, this BlackRock guy, is now starting to run his mouth about how the you know Social Security's a joke and we shouldn't have it. It's 
you know, we need to make people work a lot longer. And, you know, 65 is a ridiculous age to retire. And then this other guy, this uh, Ben Shapiro uh, guy, he's all talking about how it's crazy that, you know, Social Security pays retirement benefits at the retirement age that is uh, presently offered in the United States. Are you kidding me, folks? Do you know how hard some people work for 20, 30, 40 years just to get to that point where they only have a few years left because they gave everything they had to the factory job or the whatever job they had? Or they, they, they managed to get a few little pittance out of the government. And yet these guys that own these hedge funds that are buying everything up and putting people on the streets and, you know, running interference for uh, the very people that print the money and are destroying this country are now saying that uh, not only are, you know, on the heels of us being insulted on a daily basis and being mocked by all the vile filth in the media, they got to tell us we got no right to stop working when we get to a ripe old age. That we got to work until our hands fall off, until our feet fall off. Until, you know, the cardiac myopathy or the neuropathy or the atrial fibrillation or the chronic kidney disease or the colon, colorectal cancer, or the breast cancer or the ovarian cancer or the or the or the blood clots from the white coats, uh, you know, uh, operation doesn't finish you off until uh, that way they don't have to pay you. Folks, do you see what's going on? We're being slapped in the face and spit on by a bunch of sickos. All right. I don't know one 65 year old person that wants to go to work. All right. They just want to. Now, they would stay home if they could afford to. Believe me, most of the people that are working after that age do it because they have to, not because they want to. So, by the way, if you know, if you hear these guys, you know, talking like that while the news just con continues to insult you like it did on 9-11 when they told you that uh, the World Trade Centers were taken down by uh, airplanes that crashed in them. And uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but if you've studied the construction of the Trade Centers, you would realize that, you know, when an airplane hits a, a bird in the sky, it can damage the fuselage and bring the airplane out of the sky down to the ground immediately. Uh, when airplanes have a bird strike, there you could see examples and photos of uh, commercial airliners that literally, you know, run into some ducks or some geese, and you can see what it does to the fuselage. So how is it possible that the super light alloy uh, skinned aircraft can penetrate uh, these heavy duty uh, steel I-beams that were constructed by uh, American steel forgers in the 1960s. How is it possible that, you know, a thing made out of titanium and aluminum alloy can cut through steel like a hot knife cuts through butter, but yet a, a seagull puts a big dent in the thing when it's flying in the air? And how is it that uh, we're supposed to believe that, you know, those pictures were real just because the news channels all had the same footage playing at the same time on the same queue, just like on all the AM radio news channels in California, they used to have the same topics being covered at the same time on the same hour, no matter what, whether it was KFWB or KNX 1070, uh, you know, it was always at this time it was sports, at this time it was the Hollywood hour, at this time it was the weather, no matter, you couldn't escape the programming because it was all in a loop, right? Time on the same intervals. Now we're being force fed. What's next? The aliens? Oh, the aliens are coming. Are they going to bring a virus with them? So we're going to have this, uh, or, or, or is it going to be the, you know, the, uh, the, the plague, the hemorrhagic plague that's going to come up through the Darien Gap down in Panama, right? That that's, that's where all the Chinese are coming up through right now. They're getting special, uh, they're getting special accommodations to head north, right? I don't know, folks. Boy, these roads are bad. You know, I don't know what kind of uh, halide compounds they're putting in Fullerton's water, but the residents that tolerate this, now, I don't know how they're they're being anesthetized, but I think the person that has managed or the people that have managed to anesthetize 
uh, the residents of Fullerton into accepting this infrastructure should get the Nobel Prize in science for what they've been able to accomplish. It's unbelievable. Anyway, folks, this is just, you know, this is a drive time edition. I'm trying to get your attention. You know, it's like, okay, you believe that fake moon landing footage, huh? Really? You believe that paper mache piece of crap with a little bit of foil on it uh, carried a couple of astronauts through, uh, I don't know, have you ever been up in an airplane and uh, you get up to about 29,000 feet and it's uh, 90 below zero up there? <laughs> do you know how cold 90 below zero is? <laughs> and uh, do you think they're able to fit all that insulation and car batteries and Jeep tires inside that thing so they can drive around? Um, you know, Stanley Kubrick's studio, I mean, the surface of the moon. Come on. Have you, look at, look at the lunar limb photos, and it looks like a sixth graders science project, folks. I mean, do you, okay. Our parents, you know, they're pretty simple. They were nice people. They worked hard. They were very gullible. They didn't have any distrust because they had Walter Cronkite you know, lullabying him to sleep every night. They kept the same, you know, the same faces, giving us the same lies on the same five stations for 50 years, and they just blatantly trusted them. And, and that's the problem, is they literally tolerated all of this deception because they didn't question anything. Well, folks, we are in a different time where we have definitely... Uh, we literally have been forced to not trust these people because they can't be trusted by their own behavior. I mean, what they're involved in, the levels of things that they're involved in, the level of deception and evil that they're involved in, and the way they try to mass market it to us and, and literally just make us accept it at face value. So we're supposed to swallow everything now. So, you know, a lot of people now have a lot of questions and rightfully so, and you should. Because when you open your eyes, their track record is an absolute dismal joke. And we know what their we know what their intentions are. We know what they're up to. And because we know their history. We know what they've done. We know what they're going to do. And the problem is, unless we wake up, they're gonna keep doing it. And that's what the problem is. And you know, this is just another example today. Um, I'm going to stop this thing for just a minute here because I'm, I'm actually in a safe spot where I can talk for a little more. This is the this is the channel that you can tune into to get a, a perspective that will make you think. Uh, you know, I'm not here to tell you to go out and buy a bunch of supplements uh, to fight off the snake venom crap. Okay, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to to to, to mock you and to make merchandise out of you. What I'm here to do is to try to get you to think. That's all I've ever done is try to get you to think. And the problem is the schools make it so nobody can think, all right? You know, I was in the, the Goodwill store the other day and there was a, a younger man than me. He's probably in his, maybe his early 40s. And uh, he was buying uh, some toys. I could see that he had, you know, young young children. Kind of reminded me of the time I was buying those things. And you know, I said, yeah, I hope, you know, hope your kid will enjoy that. You know, we had one of those uh, remote control helicopters when my son was younger. He's he says, yeah. He says, I got to do something. I got to get him out of the house. He says, all he does is play video games. You know. In my community, this was about uh, 11 years ago, they made the transition to go from textbooks to screens. That's right, they, they, they wanted the children to come to school with a television set in their hands instead of, uh, you know, books, right? And, you know, not only did they want the children to come into school with a television set in their hands, can you imagine going to school with a television set in your hands when you were a little kid, you know, watching your cartoons? And uh, I, I would have had all the Twilight Zone episodes on the thing if that if I had my way. 
But can you imagine sending children to school with a television set in their hands years ago? Well, that's what uh, our community did. And not only that, they had it set up to where it was a wireless television set. And the problem was that this wireless television set actually used the frequency that damaged the girl's eggs in their, in their, their undeveloped eggs, their ovarian reserves, as well as other problems. And it was intentional, but you know, that isn't, that isn't bad enough, but these, uh, these portable tablets that they handed kindergartners and first graders and second graders and third graders and fourth graders and fifth graders and sixth graders and seventh graders and eighth graders. And then the, the Chromebooks they handed the ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th graders starting about 11 years ago have become the gateway to the video game addiction that has destroyed so many children. And uh, I, I want to really uh, put a shout out to the people in my community that brought the technology into the schools, that organized the foundations and set up the foundation for fundraising to assist the school district to purchase infertility pads and Chromebooks for the elementary and the high schools. And the people that worked for the school district that lobbied the administrators, uh, that how wireless was safe and how wonderful this new technology is for children and uh, one of these individuals even went on uh, to get a, a Cracker Jack education doctorate degree. And the thesis of this individual was on how effective screens are for learning and how in this uh, doctoral thesis, this individual who's responsible for bringing the Wi-Fi uh, lobby to Fullerton and the uh, screens into the hands of the children by having his wife set up the foundation to fundraise to bring this weaponized technology in the classrooms, had written his uh, doctoral thesis so he could get his uh, education doctorate out of the uh, Cracker Jack Mill degree system. He wrote it on how effective screens were for children's learning. My heart goes out to all parents who have to fight the video game addiction and how it's destroying their children, how it's destroying their eyesight, how it's destroying their minds, how it's destroying their health. And I just wanted to put a shout out to the people in Fullerton who have single-handedly taken it upon themselves to bring this horrific curse on young people. And in Jesus' name, may your damnation find you sooner than later. That's all I can say. Because there has been no repentance from this clan, so to speak. But, you know, I just had to throw that in because I happen to be in a position to where it pains me to see people suffer. I can see it in this guy's eyes. And I see it and hear about it from so many people. How the schools have destroyed their children and how these vile, wicked people just continue to double down on the destruction of children uh, so they can maintain, uh, I guess, their uh, level of degenerate status in the, uh, the hierarchy and their uh, really paltry standard of living as a result. But I, I had to make a mention of that because, you know, this was uh, on Sunday I saw this gentleman and, you know, I just... I promised myself that I would put a shout out to the responsible guy and his wife that, that really brought this curse to Fullerton. And he knows who he is. And hopefully, you know, he'll do the right thing someday and turn from his wicked ways and maybe try to make amends and try to reverse the damage he's done. Although I don't see how that's possible because over the past 14 years, uh, you, you've had, uh, or 11 years or so, you've had upwards of 60,000 uh, elementary and uh, high school students go through the district. And of course, this curse spread to the colleges. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many ways we're under attack. There's so many things that are being done to us by so many bad people. Uh, don't give them a pass, folks. You got to call this stuff out. You know, we got to stop watching television and believing the lies and start uh, using critically thinking eyes, okay? 
because without that, we're doomed. And we got to wake up and understand that the people in charge hate us. They want us dead. They, 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 they want us off the face of this earth. They want a world of their own. And they want to do it in a way that brings about a maximum amount of suffering and humiliation and uh, just degenerate filth in the process. And if you don't believe me, all you've got to do is turn on your television or all you've got to go to is, is onto the Netflix website and look at the trash. All you've got to do is listen to uh, the divisive programming full of hatred on the on the network news. All you have to do is examine the curriculum in these schools and look at all the stuff these children are being force fed. All the lies of history and the, the fraud of science and, and germ theory and the shape of the earth and the phony history and all of the uh, all of the mind control aspects to this uh, takedown of this once great nation, folks. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm going to expose it, and you should too. And by the way, do your part and extract your children from this matrix to the best of your ability because the less education your children have, the smarter they will be. The more critically uh, thinking capability they will attain, okay? You need to understand that education does not equal intelligence. As a matter of fact, the longer you are educated, uh, that indicates that your level of common sense and your level of awareness of your environment and your overall ability to discern is declining. Education is directly proportionate to a decline in your cognitive function. And education is, the level of your education is inversely proportionate to your level of intelligence. All right. All right, so once again, uh, my take on the bridge collapse, well, this obviously was a false flag. I, I don't see it being an accident. How could a ship like that just lose power? I mean, come on, seriously? You, you really think something like that happened in my accident? No? All I know is they're getting ready uh, for World War III on so many fronts. And, you know, if you don't see what's happening right now, you're going to start seeing it whether you like it or not, okay? All right, folks, we've gone kind of long on this. Uh, I guess I'll cut this broadcast right about now. I just want to confirm with all of you that you are indeed a follower of Jesus Christ, that you've placed your faith in Him, that you've been born again by His Spirit. If you don't understand how to do that, I'm going to give you a simple set of instructions right now. And don't, don't let the views drop off right now, folks. This is the most important part of the video. This is the altar call, okay? Can I get more thumbs up right now, please, for the glory of God and His kingdom and His Son, Jesus Christ? Okay, so we lose about 20 of you once I start talking about Jesus. All right. Well, here's the deal, folks. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care who you've done it to. There's a really good chance that you had no idea what you were doing when you did those things and you were under the spell of Satan. And it doesn't take much to fall under his spell. All you got to do is turn on the radio, turn on the television, open a magazine, open one of the books you checked out at the library, open up one of the books in your classroom, open up one of the books on your homework list, open up one of the books on your recommended reading list, open up one of the, uh, you know, the, the cartoon booklets that you may have been, uh, you know, given as a child. It's all sigil imagery, it's all satanic, it's all in diametric opposition, Almighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. It is all intentional. You need to ask Jesus to forgive you, and you need to be truly sorry for what you've done. And once you get to that point, that means you'll try to stop, and you ask Him and He'll help you stop. And if you want the strength to stop, He will give you the power to stop, because you don't have the power on your own. As a matter of fact, your flesh is no match for the wiles of the devil. That's why you need Jesus Christ and the armor of God and the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom and discernment and courage and strength to say no to sin and say yes to eternal life and to have victory over this sinful flesh that we were born into. And then, and then, and only then, when you receive the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, through the sinless shed blood on that cross from 2,000 years ago, you will have eyes that will see and ears that will hear, and you'll have a mind that will understand, folks. 
because once you're born again, they can never trick you or fool you again, folks. And you will never be a slave to sin again once you get to that point. Ever! And that's right where they don't want you. Why do you think they have 20 years of school waiting for your children? It is all run by secular, humanist, occultic, occultic Marxist pigs. Why do you think all the television is all filth and divisive programming? Why do you think all the movies are evil and satanic and trash filled? Because they want to mess you up. And because they serve the devil and they want good company in the lake of fire. The devil wants to take as many people as he can with him. And he's got a lot of circus clowns working for him. And guess what? You and I ain't going to be one of them. All right, that's it. I'm going to cut this. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, this has been another broadcast of Joe and Brianna, the Fullerton Informer. P.O. Box 4121, Fullerton, California, 92834. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure joining you this evening. I hope you have a great evening, a great afternoon, a great morning, wherever you are. Until we meet again, take care.